What's up, boys? We're back for FD2. How's your day going, Karen? How are we, how are we doing? It's going great. It's I had a great. fucking, I had a shit day today, dude. Why is so, that? So for those at home, right, so I work at a golf course, and it was a fucking monsoon today. So, oh, wow. like, my, so my job today is, oh, not today, my job in general is to this. I work at a range, you know, I pick some balls, I wash the balls, and I give the balls to the people at home. Right. But today, I- it was raining. So there was yeah. legitimately there was I saw four people today in the, in my five hour shift I saw four people. Yeah. I started to lose it. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's tough. No, and and also did like wait did you like were you aware of the weather today? Were you like aware of what was happening? I was aware. I I was aware. That's of the good. Room. So like it would be like there was like this. Like, one moment, you know, like, the birds are chirping. Wow, I'm having a pretty good time. And then, like, the next one was just torrential downpours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, okay. Because, yeah. like, there's, like, these things um that, like, people clean their clubs with. So, it was, like, there's, like, water in a bucket, right? And those shit, it, it just went to shit. So, I had to fucking go okay. out and, like, close the shit, bro. I got fucking drenched. My God. Yeah. All right. So, let's go on to why we're actually here. So, we're sticking to the general setup that we did last time. Are we are we going in the same one? Are we going sports first, or are we going a little bit unconventional? I think I think we'll go in order. We'll yeah, yeah, let's just stick to the order. To yeah, yeah. All right, what, what are we talking about today? What are we talking about? First, we're talking about we're doing sports. We're doing uh, saying three NFL teams that are overrated, and three NFL teams that are underrated. So like sleepers, and then people who like will flop or underachieve. So just a clarification: this is it's mid June, so. It is like, mid- if, like, yeah. let's say, like, one of our team's star quarterback goes down and, like, you guys are like, oh, you were wrong. Like, it's just it's just not that yeah, serious. Chances are all these will be wrong. I mean, like, well, I mean, speak for yourself. But... All right, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, right. Are you, are you going to kick us off? Oh, yeah, we're just – oh, two, we're, we're going to talk about oh. the music one. We're going to say three unpopular music opinions. That is what we're doing for number two. And then the third one, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what happens. Okay. Yeah. All right, so, so – okay. Started off at one. Do you want to go underrated first or overrated? Nah, well, yeah, let's go underrated first. Yeah. Uh, underrated let's, let's first. Underrated. And the Detroit Lions is are my first team. My God. Let me explain. <laughs> I think that when you look at the roster. Okay. Stafford, pretty he's, he's a solid QB. He's not bad. Can I make a comment on Stafford real quick? Go ahead. I think Stafford is a good quarterback, mm-hmm. but I feel like his surrounding pieces are so bad. Like, you, you heard the report that he played last season with a broken back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I, and also I feel like he's set up to fail with the defensive-minded head coach of Matt Patricia. I feel like in like this type of NFL, like if Matt Stafford had a guy like McVay, he would like blossom into a top-tier quarterback. Well, not you got what I'm saying, like a lot better than he is now. Okay, I agree. Uh, Matt Patricia might not be the best coach. But I'm just saying, if you look at their roster, let me let me go through this. Okay. You got you got Stafford, solid like to good QB. I agree with Rock, you there. I, you got Carry on Johnson. I feel like he's actually gonna like kind of break out this season. I feel like running backs are irrelevant. <laughs> well, not irrelevant, but like, yeah. Thanks, thanks for the thanks for the input. But uh, uh, I like Carry on Johnson too. I think he's a good player, but I just don't think that's I don't, that doesn't move the needle for me when I'm talking about the lines. Fair enough. O line. We look at O line. Uh, they got Frank Rag now. He's good. <laughs> Rag. He's actually like good. I yeah, the bang the Bengals were gonna draft him and then he went to pick before Billy Price. True story. Yeah, I, I recall that. Billy Price is decent though, but we'll get into that. He was injury prone. Oh. Yeah. At least his rookie year. We got Taylor Decker. He's pretty decent. Is he? <laughs> he is, believe it or not. Okay. Sure man. Solid right tackle. I mean, they got Rick Wagner. He's all right. Yeah, no, he's, he's decent. The center and the right guard are kind of meh. I thought Ragnar played center. Is he, is he playing left guard in Detroit? He's playing left guard, yeah. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Crazy things. Why does <laughs> you, got, you got Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay. I, mean, I like Kenny Galladay, too. I don't think yeah, he's the number right, one. Now. Right. I don't think he's the number one. TJ Hawkinson? It's a rookie. I like I, mean, I he was one of my favorite players. Okay, in the but draft, I feel like but, he's, he's like a pretty pro ready rookie. But he doesn't have, see Kenny Galladay doesn't have to be a number one though. 
because they have Amendola. They got Amendola. Danny Amendola. I'm just saying. Come on, man. Got Marvin Jones. Pretty decent. They got Jermaine. Wait, you got who? Who? I didn't hear what you said. Uh, they got Jermaine Curse. Oh, Jermaine Curse. Oh yeah, they got a, the Super Bowl catcher. Yeah. So that's you know that's solid. He blows, but okay. And if you look, dude, the main problem with the Lions last year was their pass rush, and they fixed that completely. Like, you don't understand. I think Trey Flowers was a system pass rusher. Okay. Well, I mean, personally, I don't, I don't, I don't. All right, let me rephrase. I don't think Trey Flowers is gonna get like twelve sacks this year. I don't know if he got 12 sacks this year with the Patriots, but um, I don't think he moves the needle to the Lions, personally. <laughs> okay. I'm going to use move the okay. needle a lot, by the way. I mean, they they got uh Hand. Hand played really well last year. Hand? Yeah, do you know Hand? Who the fuck is Hand? <laughs> Dude, he played well. Hand. <laughs> Hand. Hand. You're telling, Sean, me this, you're, wait, 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 you're telling me there's I can buy a Detroit Lions jersey with hand on the back? Yes. <laughs> yes, he was good. The world we live in? <laughs> My gosh. People don't know because the Lions like suck, but Deshaun Hand. Deshaun Hand. That's a good name. Watch out. Can I have a rebuttal? You don't go ahead. Uh I, d- I don't think the Detroit Lions are like a like a bad team. I just think that they're in a bad division for what you're trying to say. Like I feel like Chicago is definitely better than them, and I feel like Green Bay is better than them. I I just feel like they play in a tough division. They, all right, I feel like that's the only potential counter argument to what I'm saying. They're gonna go six and ten. <laughs> no, no, they have a good team though. Damon uh, Harrison, Damon Harrison, Damon I mean, Harrison, yeah, snacks, Damon snacks Harrison, Harrison. Yeah, yeah, snacks Harrison, yeah. He's good. He's actually like. Oh yeah, he's a good. He's a good run stopper. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I mean Detroit is a losing franchise. Uh, I, I mean, their linebackers are kind of weak. But you got Darius Slay. I don't know. It's not. It's not a bad team. They're not making the playoffs, so no chance. They fixed their main issue of pass rush. And there, I, there, I, there is no chance they make the playoffs. Not yeah, I doubt. It. But I think they are underrated. Okay, I respect it. All right, my first underrated team. We're going. I'm, I'm starting off with a bang. I'm going with the Indianapolis Colts. Now you're probably gonna dislike this one, but um, I do, I do, as a matter of fact. So the Colts are my Super Bowl pick this year. Uh, I feel like Andrew Luck is back. I mean, nah. I mean, the Colts started one and five, and then they went ten and six and won a playoff game. I feel like that's a great sign. I'm really high on Frank Reich. I feel like Frank Reich's a good up and coming coach this year. And I feel like they're just kind of doing everything right. Like, they didn't overpay for a free agent um, this offseason. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, th- I think they got Devin Funches on a one-year deal, which will help them in the passing game. Eric Ebron I mean, was a nice breakout player. Funches? I don't know. I mean, What's he's the, better than like, what they had. Hit him, like, 14 mil. Yeah, yeah just... but it's just a one-year deal. He's off the books next yeah. year, which is, like, what you do when you have a ton of cap. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just throw one-year yeah. deals at players. Yep. Uh, I feel like Darius Leonard is a great player. Quinn and Nelson transformed their O line, and I don't know. Like I, I, I feel like I can bet on Andrew Luck. So I feel like they're underrated in the respect that I don't think that they're being taken seriously as a Super Bowl contender. I think they're gonna win the Super Bowl next year. Wow, mid June. We're talking mid June here. All right, so you know, if ahead. I change my opinion in August or September or whenever, but yeah, like I got, I got the coolest one in the Super Bowl next year. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just don't know how much I trust their secondary. That's my main issue. I mean, Malik Hooker's good, and wait, didn't they draft of secondary? Deontay Thompson? Did they, they drafted Rockison. Oh yeah, I mean, he's pretty good. Great yeah, he's, de- he's decent, but he's a rookie, so we don't know. And you know, uh, Malik Hooker had like a really good start to the rookie season until like I think it was Keelan Cole absolutely demolished him. Okay. On the block. Yeah, yeah. Tore okay. both like. MCL and like ACL is wild. Okay. Wild scenes. Keelan can but, go drop a pass. That's what Keelan can go do. Yeah. <laughs> he will. I no, I know. That's what I'm saying. That's the only thing I can. Yeah. Uh, that, that's the only thing that Keelan's responsible for, just dropping passes off the Yeah, I know. I mean, he also just laid an incredible block. But that's besides shout, the point. shout out to Keelan Cole. I know he's listening. What's up, Keelan? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, yeah, that's, that's my main issue with the Colts. 
and they're in your division, uh, so it kind of goes against your narrative of the Jags I, making it to yeah, the title they, game. They would have to beat, yeah, exactly. They would have to beat the Jags in the title game. I don't know if that's happening. Okay, so, I respect it. Okay. Um, team number two for me. Number of those. At the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Hey! Come into your senses. I love it. This is great. Pick. This is the result of absolute necessity that I took them <laughs> You know, that's that's a good cover up. I like it. That's like the that's like the David Ortiz thing. Like back in Dominican. Oh yeah, it was mistaken identity. Of course it was. <laughs> of course it was. I wouldn't have been. He just looks like so many other people. You know, like <laughs> no, no, like David Ortiz. Like when I, if I saw David Ortiz walking down the street, I would just walk right past him. Exactly. <laughs> Precisely. All right, let's not upset people. <laughs> Tell me why the Bengals are underrated. Yeah, so Bengals. The Bungles. We got... Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like Dolan is like that bad, you know? I can, I can help you make your case as an objective yeah. fan. I mean, I'll just make my... I'll make my case, and you can add to it since you're a Bengals fan. Will do. So, what I think... They kind of uh, made some strides on their O-line, which was probably their biggest issue. That's true. Know? That's true. They got Jonah Williams and company. Yep. Billy Price from last year. I think he's he's pretty solid. Uh, I don't think Andy Dalton is that bad. I mean, he's decent under the right conditions. He can I get guess. the job done. Exactly. Uh, the job receivers done. are a strong point for them. Mm-hmm. Green, Boyd, Ross. I don't forget Auden Tate. Don't say that. guy, like, never play. Nah, yeah, he's the guy that, like, he barely made the roster last year. He got, like, a game-winning catch in preseason, and he never played. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. That's what I thought. He may, he's on, like, the roster bubble this year. I swear to God, if we cut on to it, I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> okay, man. My God. Uh, and then Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon, my guy. Yeah. He's good. Defense? Wait, wait, wait. Can I, make a, can I make a quick point on Joe Mixon that's just not related to football at all? Sure. Yeah, yo, Joe, I know you're listening. Can you uh stop going live on Instagram when you're fucking driving? My <laughs> God. Every time I go on the Bengals Reddit page, you know, like I'm at work, I'm like, yeah, let's see what the Bengals fans are getting up to. It's just Joe Mixon just looking down at his phone while driving. I'm like, Joe, you're you're a big player. Be safe, of Joe. Joe, be safe. Is he? D.D. Westbrook used to do the same thing. I mean, Joe doesn't have a very responsible past. I know, Joe. Come on, look out Fuck. for yourself. God, dude. Better lead the league in rushing this year. Just don't fucking die. Okay. okay. All right, back yeah. Um. Oh, jeez. Let's <laughs> <laughs> keep going. Let's just move fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, Kieran, I have for the count. Uh, I'll, I'll just take over from here. We'll, 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 oh, you got it? I got it. Nice. We're good. Uh, so their defense. Defensive line. Very solid. People know this. I don't need to explain that. Uh, the linebacker is kind of weak. Kind of weak. Yes, our linebackers that- suck and blow. Wow. Yeah. I'm high on William Jackson, though. I mean, I don't know why it wouldn't be. <laughs> apparently, this guy, uh, the uh, safety. Jesse Bates. Jesse Bates, apparently, he's, like, decent or something. So He is not just decent. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so, I mean, Bengals have some upside. But uh, so I guess you could consider them underrated in some form of the word. Can I uh, make my rebuttal? Yeah, yeah. You know, well, I mean, I called them underrated, so you want you really want to? Oh, I mean, it's not gonna be. I'm not disagreeing with you. Well, what? But uh, yeah. I think the you point. I don't think you intentionally like didn't uh, point this out, but I think that the main point of why the Bengals would be an underrated. Oh, you, because could, you, of the, you could talk about Zach Taylor. Yeah, no, that's that's all it is for me. It's going to be the change of culture. Like the Bengals have had Marvin Lewis since I think '03. Yeah. So I feel like that had people comfortable, and now Dalton and Green have to learn a whole new offense. Like everything out of the camp is everyone's buying in, which is something that like hasn't happened. And also like Lewis never played as young players, and I'm hoping that Taylor gives guys like Ross an opportunity. Billy Price an opportunity, Jermaine Pratt an opportunity, like guys like that. So I feel like that's like the main argument. I mean, the Bengals have a lot of like talent, but that's what they've had for the past like nine or ten years. That's like the thing about the Bengals, they have a lot of talent. And also they have a pretty easy schedule. I think they have like according I mean it's June, but like apparently they have the second easy schedule. That's probably like the fucking hardest because that's what the end for. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair points. Uh my second team going against my fandom. I got the Steelers. Fuck me, dude. I hate yeah. the Steelers, but 
Uh, I think this is like a, I think this is because everybody is so high on the Browns. That everybody's just looking past the Steelers. But like, dude, in Mike Tomlin's era, the Steelers haven't been under five hundred. So I feel like this. Really yeah, that's, be, that's the craziest stat. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying. So I feel like, oh, the Steelers lose Antonio Brown. Like, I feel like they're gonna be fine. Like, I feel like they're gonna be just fine. I mean, I'm picking the Steelers to win the AFC North. And I, yeah. I mean, I just think that they're underrated because everyone's just writing them off. They're, oh yeah, the Browns got it, but the Steelers are really they, they're a really respected organization. They're really well run. I trust Mike Tomlin to get his team nine wins. Uh, the only player on the Steelers I like is Juju Smith-Schuster. I feel like he's pretty good. Yeah, you can't really dislike Juju. James Conner is serviceable. They have a really good offensive line. T.J. Watt's good. They trade off for Devin Bush. He's pretty. You know what I like. I don't think yeah. they're gonna take this like fall off a cliff type of step back. I yeah. got them winning the division. I think they're gonna make the playoffs for obvious. I mean, they're gonna win I, the fucking division. So yeah, that's my second right. team. My third team. I went with the Niners. Jesus. Um, Niners. This is kind of tough as well, but I do believe they're underrated just because Jimmy Garoppolo. I think he's good, and I think people kind of forget. <laughs> I think. <laughs> no, all right, all right. He is good, and people kind of forget because you know he got hurt, and then he hasn't played because he, like, he got hurt. Well, this is- <laughs> <laughs> what a what a great argument this is. <laughs> Probably, I kind of like forgot. Um, running back wise, McKinnon is coming back. Dude, they have a lot of fucking running backs. Yeah, they dude. signed Coleman, so you got like a nice committee running back. They signed too many running backs, but you know they got good running backs. So Marquis Goodwin's also like good. Dante Pettis. Like Dante. Dante Pettis apparently, I think he's gonna have a breakout season. George Kittle's the main point. He's Thanks. probably one of the best tight ends and the best targets in the league. Yes. That's a dynamic offense right there. They re-signed Joe Staley, who's like, you need a good left tackle, and he's... Yeah, bad. if you don't have a good left tackle, you're not going to win many yeah, games. Yeah. Yeah. So, and their D-line is stacked with Bosa. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you got Solomon Thomas. Buckner, kind of- Thomas. Buckner. Is, yeah. They have a lot. They have a lot of like. I think, up I and think I'm talent. getting someone else, but yeah. Quan Alexander. Got, they, I, they sign. This uh, you're forgetting Quan Alexander. Oh, you know, no, no, no. I, I mean, oh, are you talking on the D line? But yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> I think he's good. Might overpay for him, but you know he's. I mean, he's he good. yeah. I'm high on Quan Alexander too. He's only 24. Uh, I mean, the Bengals were well, they weren't rumored to him, but like you know, I was always looking at linebackers as like a free agency hope. And my only like problem with Quan was I don't think he's that good at tackling. I he might be right. He's not a tackler. Yeah, I don't know. It was just he got. I think he got heavily overpaid. But that's just the league we live in. Oh, they got D Ford. That's the guy I was missing. Mm. Yeah, D Ford. Oh yeah, the guy that lined up offense. Uh, offside. Yeah, fuck you, yeah. D Ford. D Ford. The fuck off my mention. If you're, if you're watching this video, click off it. Yeah, we don't want you here, D. Nah, I'm not here for it. But yeah. I mean, I think they're going to be good. Also, yeah. they, also, they also have Debo Samuel. Watch out for Debo Samuel. Okay. I will. Yeah. You know what? I will. <laughs> you know, Sherman. Yeah. Uh, he's falling off. Yeah, no, but Jimmy Ward is good. The safety. He's not bad. He's not bad. They got Mike McGlinchey. He was a... McClin- yeah, he was the offensive lineman that they picked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, talent all around. And Kyle Shanahan, good coach. One of the... I'd say top. Uh, Seven coach. That's a different discussion. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I think for the Niners, um, I I mean I like Jimmy Garoppolo too. He doesn't have many much experience. As crazy as that sounds, like he's, I think he's only played like eight games. So I mean in those eight games he was very good. But I just would want to see it. Um, my concern for the Niners would be a they play in a tough division. That's kind of be a common theme with underrated teams. That's just the way it goes. And yeah. also, um. Yeah, that's really at the division. That's my only real concern. <laughs> I will say, I just want to mention, I would have put the Jags on this list, but that would appear as, as bias. Apparently. Every, everyone thinks their team's underrated, man. <laughs> but the Jags actually are, so just... It, no, there's like, this, there's, like, there's like this thing every NFL fan in August. I mean, hey, we can get 10 wins this year. <laughs> that's how, yeah, this is how it goes. We actually can. We actually can. And that's that's the point. I'm happy for you that you're optimistic. You know? Yes, I, yeah. All right, my last underrated team is the Falcons. 
So, uh, I feel like the Falcons were really injury prone last year. I think Deion Jones went down. Um, yeah. Keanu um, Neal down, right? Yeah, Keanu Neal, Ricardo Allen. Like they, they got decimated in the secondary and linebacking core. Yeah. Uh, Matt Ryan had a really good season last year. Yeah, I think he had like 35 touchdowns, seven picks. They stole Julio. Calvin Ridley's coming up. De- Devontae Freeman's good. Yeah. And I feel like uh, their division – is Loki kind of taking a fall off like the Tampa Bay fucking Yeah, I, I think that's the most. Yeah, no, like like the the fucking ears are terrible. Um, yeah. the Panthers like I just can't trust them. Like Cam Newton, I like Cam Newton as a player and I respect him, but I don't know if he can stay healthy. And their defense is sus as fuck. And then the Saints, I'm mm-hmm. high on the Saints. I think the Saints are going to win the division, but I think yeah. the, I think the Saints Falcons is. are going to be a second are going to be a wild card team. Yeah. yeah. Well, I agree. Yeah. All right, let's go on to the overrated. Overrated teams. Uh, first one I got, I got the Dallas Cowboys, the boys. Ooh, okay. You know, uh, I feel like they kind of overachieved last year. Definitely, I, don't think I agree with you there. Like, repeat what he did. Okay. Dak Prescott, I don't know if they, like. He's going to get paid. Yeah, get paid. that's kind of concerning if I'm a Cowboys fan. Luckily, I'm not, but. Uh, I mean, we'll talk about the contract if it happens, but on, yeah, the, we'll, that's what we'll discuss. on the surface, I don't think it's that. Oh, I don't know the numbers, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind giving the keys of my franchise to Dak Prescott personally. That's a different discussion. Okay. So here, uh, I don't know if he's really like gonna like lead the team to like a super good record, like people are expecting. Yeah, that's a weird one. Yeah, it's hard to judge. I don't know how strong their defense is. It's kind of a question mark. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like overrated. Uh, I, yeah, I would consider them overrated as well. I don't think they're going to win their division. Uh, I got Philly won in that division. I mean, obviously, this is mid but this can change. But I think that the Cowboys will always be overrated because they're Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would I would, I would, would hope that they get Cooper and Prescott's deals done if it's at a reasonable price, just so there's no, like, holdout. Or, you know, like, there's no – friction in the locker room you get what i'm saying like just get it done yeah. and then you're good but yeah i agree with that yeah all right uh my first favorite team i mean you guys should see this coming it's the browns i hate the browns i've right. always hated the browns like okay. dog we're not gonna get into too much detail on this because i can talk about this shit for like 10 to 15 minutes right right, right. but First off, the Browns are going to face expectations for the first time in franchise history. Not even kidding. This is a good, I mean, that I can do. I like, wouldn't go that far. That's 10 years. 10 years. Sure, sure. Yeah. Freddie Kitchens is going to be his first head coaching gig. That's not a good sign for me. I would rather have a guy like Mike McCarthy or maybe they could have swing um, Harbaugh from Michigan. But okay. I don't like that sign either. I feel like Baker Mayfield's a good quarterback, but he's a second-year quarterback. We don't know what he is yet. They yeah. obviously have yeah. a good receiving core, but that doesn't mean you're going to win games in the NFL. For me, anyways, I, feel, I mean, Odell's a great player. He's one of the most talented players in the league. But in his career, I'm not saying it's his fault necessarily, but it's not like, oh, you put Odell on a team and they're going to win. You got what I'm saying? Like That's just not how these things work. I like their defense. I like Miles Garrett, but I mean the Browns just have shit show written all over it. I won't go that far, but they have they have too many they have too many personalities. It's just so crowded. I don't know. I think they're gonna be six and ten. <laughs> wow. Really? I think they're gonna be terrible. I think I think they're kind of overrated, but just because of like everyone's expecting them to be really good. Dude, if you were picking them to win the goddamn Super Bowl. Yeah. See. I do think they'll make the playoffs, though. I oh, no the, chance. I Yeah, they'll make the wild card. Wild card. It's too early, but okay. Sure. Yeah. Man. All right, what's your next team? Next over eight team, I got the Chicago Bears. Oh. Yeah, the Bears, I don't know. It's, the Bears. <laughs> I, I don't like Trubisky at all. I don't either. Not a fan of Trubisky. Uh, I don't know how. I mean, is that is that how far it goes with overrated? You just don't like Trubisky. That's a, I mean that's a valid argument. Yeah, it's valid. I mean, I don't think their quarterback is good. I don't know. They might have just had like a really fortunate season last year. I don't my, know. My take on the Bears would be like they didn't lose any pieces to their defensive. Oh well, they lost Amos, but um, they they have Eddie Jackson. They'll be yeah, that's in the okay. safety category. 
So I feel like their defense, I mean, I don't think they're going to be terrible. But I do agree with you. Like they're, I think they're like leading Super Bowl odds. They're in the top five. I don't think they're going to win the Super Bowl. But I, yeah. I don't think they're going to fall off just because I like Matt Nagy a lot. And I, and I like his philosophy. And I feel like he can get Trubisky in situations to succeed. And in the regular season, that's all you need to do. You Maybe. get what I'm saying? So, yeah. I just, I'm just i just pretty low on Trubisky. And that's the main reason. I am as well. But they were a field goal away of going to – you know, they were a field goal away at winning a playoff game. So, yeah. I, I feel like the Bears are an up-and-coming team. I mean, I love Khalil Mack. I love their defense. is fucking unreal. Eddie Jackson is. Uh, but, yeah. Okay. My uh, yeah. next over here team. Sick in the north. <laughs> Every team besides the Bengals are over here or under. I get the Ravens. I mean, I'm very just going to keep this short and sweet. I, I I mean, they're playing a receiver at quarterback, and they got to win four games. And that's just – they lost They lost T.J. Mosley. They don't really have a backup plan. I mean, yeah. like – yeah, I, I mean, the, the wild card can be effective at times, but when you run it every play. Well, um, I feel like um a lot of like like the reason why a sophomore slump is really prevalent in sports is because it's like, oh, like Mahomes, right? So like he comes right. out and he's just guns blazing, and now like this upcoming year, everybody has film on him. So I'm yeah. not saying Mahomes is gonna take a step back or anything. I'm just saying everyone has film on the Ravens' offense. And Lamar Jackson in particular, so I feel like that's gonna go against them because like the Chargers made Lamar Jackson basically invisible mm-hmm. in that playoff yeah. game. Yeah, and they I, play a really tough schedule because uh, wait, did they finish second? Oh, they play a tough schedule. I know that. Plus, they really don't have any weapons. Yeah, they they just suck. They really they really don't have any weapons. They They're also defense is good though, especially with Earl Thomas. But well, yeah, but they lost Mosley. They lost they, their Mike. That's that's tough. But their yeah. pass rush. Yeah, they got. Didn't they pretty, lose to Darius Smith too? They did, yeah. But they got like a couple of good pieces in there, like Bowser and um, what's his name? Oh, the Malcolm Smith. Malcolm Smith. It might be. Whatever, it's irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, who's your last team? Last team, I got Houston Texans. As oh, uh, the shocker! Wow, that's a 16 seed beating a one. <laughs> for for a few reasons. For a few reasons. Okay. One, the off season they've just had has been horrific. The draft, they blew the draft. It was awful. Okay, I agree with you, but is this Titan a Tower? I okay. I, right. I agree with I, you. That was. I find that very funny. I, I agree with you, right? Yeah. But it's just too early for every prospect. Okay. I mean, sure. Like, sure. like, so I 100% agree with you. They should have picked Taylor over Howard. And that works yeah. in your favor, so you should be happy about that. But, like, I've been I, wrong so many times. So, I wouldn't like, – like, it's just too early, dude. Like, yeah, and it's not even it's not even the prospect either. Uh, they're just kind of in shambles right now. I mean, they don't have a GM. Okay. Uh, but even, like, beyond that, their actual team, I, I really don't think they fixed their own line at all. It's still, like, really bad. So, by overrated, where do you think they're going to end up this year? Third in the South. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. Man. I know. Yeah, it's pretty extreme. I know. But That's like, the like they didn't lose anything. I don't really get that. No, I know. You just don't like the Texans, I guess. I mean, I guess. you could say the same I, thing about me saying the Browns and the Ravens. And also, Deshaun Watson played pretty bad in the playoff game. I, I okay, so I yeah that that had me. I had some concerns about that, but I mean, I would like think those concerns come up when they reach the playoffs. You get me like. One o'clock at home against the Titans. He's not. Jerson wants to be like, ah, oh, shit. You got I guess, then. but they got a weak secondary too. Like they, wait, they have. They, don't they have still have Tyron Matthew? It's pretty good. And oh, oh, wait, oh, shit. Uh, Justin, the, Reed. Justin Reed. Justin Reed, that rookie. He's nice, Justin dude. Reed, they don't have Tyron Matthew. Oh, he, oh, he didn't sign. Who did he sign? He went to the. Wait, you went to the who? You got out. What? You went uh, to the went who? To you got out. The who? I, the Chiefs. The I swear. Chiefs. Oh yeah, yeah, you did good. You yeah, said, yeah. Right. Tyron Matthew right. sucks, not. Nah, because... <laughs> All right, I agree. He does kind of suck. Um, but like their corners, they signed Aaron Colvin from the uh, Jags last year. Oh yeah. He was a healthy scratch in their playoff game. No, it wasn't their playoff game two years ago. No, uh, last year. Last year. No, not for the Jags. He was good on the Jags. He was a slot corner for them. He was good. But then he signed with the Texans trying to be an outside corner. 
Okay. And he was bad. What do you say? I like Aaron Colvin, but uh, on the on the Texans, uh, I think they're gonna be. I don't think they're gonna take a monumental setback. They still got Watt. They still got Clowney. They still got Watson and Hopkins. Uh, yeah. I mean, I got them making the playoffs. Like that's kind of <laughs> your mistake. All right, man. <laughs> and my last overrated team, man, we've been talking about this for a minute, but uh, I got the Rams. I'm just gonna keep it short and sweet. Super Bowl hangover, and I don't know how that Todd Gurley injury is gonna hurt their offense. All right. But mainly yeah. the Super Bowl hangover. I feel like Jared Goff got fucking exposed. Same with McVay. McVay had no no answer. And yeah, uh, I don't know. The Rams are giving me some concerns. But yeah, All right. that's about yeah. it. Talked about that for a minute. Yeah. So we're just going to slide right into... Slide. Ooh, you used segue yeah. yesterday. Okay. Slide. I like it. Yeah. We're going to talk about three unpopular music opinions we have. So you want to you wanna start us? Oh, I'm starting? Oh, okay. Okay. So we're going to start off. Um. So my first unpopular... I don't know if this is unpopular. I didn't hit up my Twitter followers. My... uh. Yeah, okay. The community I have on Twitter, but uh right. so I have the song This Is America by Childish Gambino. I feel like the song is absolute garbage without the music video. <laughs> wow. Um, garbage? Yeah, I like I feel like the, the whole meaning of the song is in the music video. No, I agree, but absolute garbage. Yeah, wow. like this is America and then like the gunshot, like how am I supposed to know what's happening? Actually, they don't even have the gunshot on the song. No, but yeah, but you get what I'm saying. Like, they, so like the the whole song by Gambino is great. Yeah, it's a great yeah. concept, and it got the point across great, and it got the country talking, which is hard to do in today's era. But like, if I'm just talking like, oh, I'm in the car, and I can listen to This Is America, I just you just don't get the same feeling, dude. You just yeah, don't. I agree. Like the whole thing, like when they shot up a church. And they, they all like the dances. I, I feel like there was so much symbolism in the music video that made the song such a hit, and it made the song such like a discussion of a conversation, or no topic of conversation, yeah, discussion of conversation. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> but I uh, think the song without the music video, I just don't think it's good. I agree. I'm not I a agree. fan of the song without the music video. Yeah. I had solid, solid points being made there. Yeah. All right. So for my first opinion, I'm gonna say uh, Travis Scott. Uh, can actually, like, rap really well. Like, beyond, I know, like, he's a really good artist, and his production and, like, the music he makes, like, kind of, like, psychedelic music. Okay. But actually, like, rapping, he's actually, he's really good. Because if you look at some of his earlier stuff, like, Days Before Rodeo, you know, he did a lot of rapping on that project, and it's it's pretty solid if you give it a listen. Maybe I will, man. <laughs> Even on Astral World, like, Coffee Bean. Okay. Uh, my my comment on Travis Scott is, I don't think that's like I feel like he could be a good rapper, but I feel like that's yeah. at this stage he's just had a point where that's just not his that's just not yeah. his ticket to success. I know. I know. I'm not yeah. saying I'm not saying he could rap that much. I'm just saying uh, I think he's more well rounded than some people think. Yeah. So like a lot of people think he's just like a hook on a song. So you think? Yeah. He's just I, I think I think he's actually pretty well-rounded artist plus like his production like he, he makes a lot of like beats and stuff that's how he like got his start kind of like kanye mm-hmm. i think he's more way more talented than people think shout out to travis yeah true <laughs> travis all right my uh second unpopular opinion so i mentioned frank ocean in our latest our last podcast so in terms yeah. of talent i feel like Right now, he's on par with guys like Kendrick and Kanye, like guys in the upper echelon of the rap game, right? Well, not even rap, just the music game. And I feel like it's because Frank Ocean, like if you listen to Blonde, I know you haven't listened to it, but like the concept, and he's just not afraid to do something different where I feel like guys like J. Cole, they kind of get into the mainstream, which I'll talk about on the next point. But I feel like Frank Ocean has a really talented voice and his like, lyrics like if you really listen to his lyrics they have like a ton of deep meaning so yeah, give frank ocean a listen if you haven't especially in the summer great summer <laughs> vibes man great summer vibes okay especially blonde though like if you listen blonde from front to back he's, he's really good at telling a story and like in, in an album i i just might do that you should be a good time i think i will you should okay. you should 
So, second opinion, I think that Damn is Kendrick's worst studio album. I agree with I, that, yeah. I don't know if this is, like, terribly unpopular, because I know pretty much everyone thinks it's worse than Good Kid, Mad City, and Defend the Butterfly. Oh, yeah, if you think Damn is better than one of those two, just get off the video, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. you're not welcome here. Wow. I mean, well, actually, yeah, true. It's just not even close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really like Section 80. Section 80 versus Section 80 yeah. is the close one, yeah. That's the I don't one know. where yeah, you should be. Section funny. 80 is actually like, it's good. It's good. I think I talked about this last episode. Yeah, you did. You, you brought it up. I did, yeah. But yeah, I think Damn is still good, but it just, uh, it's his worst studio album. I feel um, like Damn, um, I feel like Damn was an attempt by Kendrick to be more of a household name. So, I think he succeeded. What? Yeah, I think it was a success in that. In oh, that. absolutely! Like "Humble" was his most popular song, but I feel like yeah. he kind of ste- he kind of took a step away from what I would consider his roots. Like, because "To Pimp a Butterfly," "Good Capacity," and "Section 80, they call they all kind of have like the same tone, if that makes sense. Yeah. The same type of vibe, and I feel like with "Damn," it's like God is just nothing like those other songs. You get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. It's just like even like upbeat songs like Rigo Mortis on Section 80, it's still kind of a. It's just like the vibes are different. That's all I can really say. The vibes it's are of, different. It's, it's hard to explain the vibe, you know? So we're on the vibe. Yeah. The okay. vibes are different, you know? Okay, man. <laughs> all right, my last one. So this is going to take a while for me to explain. But um, for my unpopular music opinion, I feel like being, being mainstream. Or doing something to become mainstream is a bad thing. So. I think that's dumb. I mean. Let, let, me, you... let, me, let me make my case here. Okay. Yeah, let's see what so let's use Kendrick as an example. Just because we were just talking about him. Okay. So I feel like Kendrick started up his rap career at a really, at a really good point. Like he was. His concepts are great. And he was trending in a great direction. And he wasn't really worried about public perception and how popular he was. And I feel like this kind of goes in like more of like a deeper sense, not just music. And I feel like if you start doing things for other people that are trying to please other people, you're in the end, you're not going to please yourself. So because of that, if, for example, kind of writes humble to have it become mainstream, he say he was successful, but I guarantee you, deep down, he's like that. Really, wasn't my best project. I did that to become mainstream. Yeah, and J Cole did the same thing. I don't, I don't know the album, but like on like the song "Workout," you know that song "Workout." Yeah. So like that know. song, it was made to be mainstream. Yeah, no, he actually said he hates that song. That's what I'm saying. So I feel like maybe being mainstream isn't a bad thing for us listeners. But right. trying to do things to please the audience and not to just think about your own concepts and what will please yourself, I think that's a bad place to be in because realistically in a world like we live in today, you're, it's impossible to please everybody. There's always going to be somebody in the comments saying that your music sucks. It's always going to happen. So because of that I, fact, you can't, you just can't try to be, I don't, I don't know. That's just my, that's just my thinking. I do think that uh, that's the case for some artists, but like, other ones like whose main goal is just to be popular, and that there isn't really a ton that goes into their music. You know, I feel like being mainstream is a good thing. You know, and well, you, it like, it just depends on your goal. I know, but if you yeah. like become mainstream, like you, I imagine you'd be pretty happy and be like, oh shoot, not nah, mainstream. You know. Oh well, all right. All right. Let, let me rephrase. Okay. So yeah. I feel like I'm not saying it's like bad to be popular. Or I'm not saying yeah. it's bad to get recognition. Uh, I'm I, saying I, that that rise to recognition can't be because you you made it to have recognition. I'm okay. saying that you should yeah. make your projects in your own mind with your own concepts, and then they get recognized. Fair enough. So, like, to him, a butterfly that was not made to be mainstream. Yeah. <laughs> it just wasn't. And that's his best project, in my opinion. Okay. And same with Good Capacity, that was not made to be mainstream. No. Yeah. But yeah, that's kind of, I mean, you can take it on a deeper level, but yeah, just don't do things that just try to please others. This is not, this is not a good way to live, man. Fair enough. So, moving on, my third opinion, I'm going to say J.I.D. Jeff Dreamville will have an album on par with 
you know, some of the best albums of the past few years, you know, like, like 2014 Forest Hill Drive. We're comparing it to J. Cole because, you know, also in Dreamville, you know. I think yeah. he'll have, like, an album of the year, basically. I think he'll have an album of the year. Okay. Regardless of if it actually wins album of the year. I just, uh, have... okay, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Because that, the Grammys are just, they just don't even know. Yeah, yeah. So, it's not, it's not a good way to album be. Album of the year, yeah. quality in the next three years. One, like, yeah, so basically his next album, I feel like. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm not really too, I'm not really too familiar with JID's music. I heard him on like that new Dreamville song. He sounded he was, he probably had the best verse out of the yeah no he did. But uh, I mean yeah, I'm just not really too familiar. I mean I could see it. I mean sure, but and like his last project, the Caprio Two, very solid project. Um, he's got a lot of like technical skill, you know, rapping. Okay, but I think he can also be more versatile, like. You know how like Joyner Lucas can rap well, but I he's, I don't think he's a good artist at all. I yeah I get what you're saying. It, it's yeah you, like, it's like, not just being able to put lyrics down that yeah, makes you can just rap music. fast, but like well, why? What's the point? The like Eminem too. I feel like but I feel the way about Eminem. That's a different discussion. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. 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 Who knows? I, I hope. I'm on my Watch out. album of this. JD next project. Maybe you know what. I will, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're segueing. Nice little miscellaneous topic of this. So, um, last podcast we talked about social media. So, kind of going yeah. on like the teenager type of things. Most of our audience are probably teenagers, but the the topic today. <laughs> what, what audience? I mean, I don't really see like a fifty year old man watching on, or listening to it. I'm just saying, there's zero. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Just wait, man. We'll be selling merch yeah. in no time. But, yeah, okay. uh, so the miscellaneous topic of the day is do you think like the school system SATs all that stuff prepares you for like real life graduating college actually getting into the real world so you can you can start us okay I'm gonna say I'm gonna say yes okay let me let me explain why I don't know if it's really the content is as important uh but I think I think teaching and preparing people like work ethic you know like they have to do work and like slowly build that up over the years of their life and they get used to doing work i, th- I feel like that's valuable i just so what they actually have to do a job it's not like i mean it's like a step up but it's not like impossible okay you know? i say that's the main thing like work ethic also time management that's okay. also can I, so, yeah. can I uh can i give a nice little ramble here go ahead so for me personally right um, I feel like school does not prepare you for real life at all. I feel like at I feel like it hampers you and for when you get into real life because for me personally, school has like been. I feel like school kills a lot of people's creativity. So what I mean by that is a lot of kids strive to get the best grades, which is a good goal to strive for because it'll help you get into the best college, right? But yeah. Realistically, getting those grades is just like a lot of memorization tactics. Or a lot of just studying over and over again, taking a test and a week later not knowing what you actually studied. Okay, yeah. So I believe that that type of studying, that type of stuff, it just doesn't prepare you to be creative and be like an outside thinker because that's how you're really successful in a world like we are in today. Like ideas like Amazon. I'm not saying everyone wants to be Jeff Bezos, but like Amazon would never be creative if everybody had to do what we do now. Just because yeah. everyone's just like, oh, yeah study world war two and we're taking a test on tomorrow and i'll study world war two i'll get a good grade on the test because i have a good memory and then i'll forget everything that happened right now i have, i couldn't tell you i have no idea what i just like if i had to take my finals right now i would fail them all and wow. i feel like i feel like that's just a bad way to prepare like it also like like the things up to my point i mean i'm 17 for those that care but like the things that i learned or the things that i value like all of them have been outside of school Every single thing is from outside school. I've never learned anything that I consider valuable inside school. Never. No. Like English and stuff. Like no. I mean, I just consider everything like, uh, like, I mean, so like, we're on this podcast, right? And this podcast for me is pretty creative. We know we have pretty creative ideas, and we elaborate, right? I feel like I'm learning a lot more about like when we do this type of stuff, when we're trying to think of what we're to talk about on essays 
Oh no, I'm fucking. Jeez, you you got me tripped up with the essay <laughs> on episodes. Rather than like my English, she's like, oh yeah, I read a five page research paper on what you thought of Huxin. So you so what you're saying is school should just be one big podcast. I mean, in a For dreamland, real? yes. No, yes. what? <laughs> but I'm That's... just I'm just thinking like personally like grades to me like grades and stuff like i try to get the best grades and because it's important but the like the way i achieve those grades dude like it's a joke to me right like i cheat a lot i can i can admit i'm sure a lot of people do yeah i cheat a ton i don't actually learn anything i'm just playing the game and i don't think that's healthy because when you get in the real world, like, there's no one to cheat off of. There's no, like, study guide to study, and then that's going to be what's on the test tomorrow. you got to be conceptual. you got to think, you got to be a critical thinker. And I feel like a lot of people just get caught in the rut of just study, get a good memory, memorize all everything, take the test. You right. know, again, that, that's just a system over and over again. And I just don't see the value in that. Okay. I personally, I just don't see the value in making kids study Pythagorean theorem and then taking a test when, like, when the fuck am I going to use Pythagorean theorem in ten years? You're not exactly like, and and also this is like a different type of discussion, but like the things we learn in school, like a lot of the things don't translate to what we're actually going to use to be successful. You know, it's just not many, not not a lot of stuff translates. I agree, but I agree with that. I agree with pretty much everything you said, but. I think the work ethic piece and, like, time management are both, like, pretty useful skills that you learn when going through school. Maybe, like, inadvertently by the school system. I don't know. But, um... um I think... Oh, so yeah, so... Keep going. Let me add together my thoughts. In that sense, school can be useful. So, yeah. That's... All right. In terms... Oh, wait. Good. Wait, hold on. Wait, what'd you say? I feel like some of the content is uh good. Like, English... History, a lot of history is pretty... Oh, oh, okay. So, uh, I believe if I was running a school system, if it's Michael's school, I would do English, right? Yeah. But there's no tests in English. It's just papers and presentations. I don't know why the fuck I would have to take an English. I agree, yeah. I don't know why there's No English fucking point. I didn't read a book all year, and the lowest grade I got on a test was an 85. I don't read books. Go on the charts, get the information the day before the test from Ranguchi, right? Like... Right. So, yeah, just papers and just presentations. I would do history, but again, papers and presentations. There should be no, because when there's a test, every kid is, what's on the test? Yeah. Is this going to be on the test? And I feel like that's a bad working habit. Um, I would have math to an extent. I would I would go up to algebra. I would do algebra. I would go up to algebra, and then kids have an option if they don't want to learn geometry. That's what I would do. Okay. Um, and then I would have foreign language. So like foreign language yeah, is for foreign. Sure. For sure foreign language. And then I would have like something that would be like current events. So like a mental health class would be helpful because a lot of kids seem like they're struggling with mental health. I'm not saying that you can't struggle with mental health, but when it's this prevalent of a problem, we should try to have like a a network where kids can work through it rather than just talking to their friends. Um right. just, like, classes on current events personally, I don't really know what's happening. Because I, I I just don't follow. Same. It. I have that's actually no idea. You know, like uh, I would I would have that as a priority and. Like apparently, there's like this pretty big thing going on in Saudi Arabia right now. Yeah, and... it's basically like the Holocaust. Well, yeah. I mean, not to that extent, but. Didn't even know that. Like. Yeah, there was like oh oh this is a whole another miscellaneous topic, but like I hate the whole selective empathy thing. Oh my god, just a like, like, thirty second thing. So like you know like the fire in Notre Dame. Yeah. So, like, nobody died, I'm pretty sure. Maybe, like, one person died. A few people got injured. And, like, yeah. oh, there was so much uproar. Oh, my God. Like, Trump don't mean yeah, don't need a billion dollars. And then this thing. I bro, heard about that. Yeah. Bro, people, dude, they found 117 bodies in the Nile River. Wow. Like, it's a problem. And nobody, no media service in, the, in America covers it. It's terrible, dude. Everyone's just trying to fit their own narrative. Kind of off topic. We'll talk about that stuff later. Back to yeah. the whole school thing. Um, I'm not. I mean, I'm. I'm just completely killing school right now. Like, I feel like school is like, obviously a great idea, but like, I should not have three hours of homework a night, and then accept to, and then expect to like retain the information 
and actually care about it. Yeah. And I like it's just and then like going into the SAT, who the fuck cares about what's on the SAT? Yeah. Like I guarantee you, if like successful people had to take the SAT, it just they would do terrible because like you don't use that type of stuff. I don't know. Man. I feel like the I feel like the entire college system is just a hoax. But hey, maybe. Yeah, uh, I just I don't know, man. Just like for those for those listening, just don't like if you guys get like bad grades or something. It's not that important, dude. You'll figure it out. It's really, it's really not that important if you get C's or A's. It's just not that big of a difference. It's right. all, it's all about your mentality towards those grades. <laughs> That's all. It's, just, it's all about the mentality, dude. Okay, I like that point of view. Okay, mm-hmm. if you're, if you're just like locking yourself in a room and studying for six hours a night, like sure you're gonna get a good grade, but what are you really gonna learn? You know? Damn. You gotta live. That's wild. You gotta live. I got it. Yeah. Bang. There we go. <laughs> so do you have any any last comments? No, I don't I don't think I do. Yeah, that's all. Alright boys, so if you made it to this point of the video, welcome. <laughs> Bienvenidos. <laughs> uh if anybody wants to sub, I'll greatly appreciate that. Maybe yeah, feel, feel like, free. like comment and subscribe. Maybe give us some suggestions for uh the next episode. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, personally, I like doing the miscellaneous, if you guys can't tell. I love the concepts. Conceptual ideas are my, it's just my bread and butter. <laughs> right. Right. All right. I mean, yeah, I guess we'll just okay. catch you guys in the next one. Farewell.